Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint Fabrication. Well, we're back on the cab, the 1950 Chevy uh, 5 window uh, here, and we're going to be working on the inside of the cab today. I've got some rust conversion uh, spray to spray up underneath the dash. I'm not really looking forward to that. And some other rust to deal with. And we also have some repairs to take care of because we have to paint the inside of the cab, and I want to make it to look as, at least as good as possible. We've got some repairs to make in there. So uh, let's jump on in. We'll take a look what we got going for today. All right, let's take a look, see what we got going on. As you can see up in here, I've got my repairs that I made from the other side of the firewall to weld down all those holes. Uh, there's rust up underneath here all along. You can see it up through here. So when we go to spray that, I'm going to have to mask all these holes on this side to make sure that spray doesn't come through. And I'm not going to brush it or roll it or anything, which I could, but it'll just be, I'll get a better job if I spray it and actually be faster in the long run. And then we have some other repairs to do. As you can see over here, we've got some uh, blistering going on. It looks like rust, you know, kind of came through there. And then we've got a hole right here. So I'm going to grind this out. And we're not going to do any patch panels or welding or anything. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, probably use that metal reinforced body filler to fill those. And then take care, you know, there's runs, you know, for where somebody rattle canned it over the years. And we're just going to take care of all that and get it prepped for paint. Uh, the fire, the, the dash, I mean, it's pretty well ready to go. It needs some spot priming and uh, prep. But all in all, these are the biggest repairs. So let me get my coveralls on and uh, go ahead and jump in here and get after it. Okay, the first thing we're going to do before we uh, move on to painting anything or any, doing anything else is see what's going on with these, these spots here. Right now, I can't get my hand down in there to feel what's going on. This is like an eruption here. Um, it kind of swells up here. So we, I'm going to take uh, the, I don't know what I got on here, 30, uh, 16 grit or something, and I'm going to grind this, all three of these, and see what's going on. And then we'll just decide what we need to do from there. You may need to hammer it down a little bit and then fill it and sand it and just uh, spray over top of it. So let me get these all ground up real quick and then uh, we'll do a little exploratory surgery here. Okay, we definitely have a hole there, right in the sheet metal. It's, uh, there's something behind it. It's just about where the inner fender well is. It's probably a spot weld right there or something. Yeah, there you go. It's made a bigger hole. And then we've got a little hole down here. Uh, so I want to make sure this gets all sealed up. We don't want any exhaust gases in the, in the vehicle. Um, for safety's sake, plus just the noise and the comfort level. So let me bang away at this one here. Yeah, there's a hole right there too. So these kind of go in. I think there's a spot weld right here that pulled it in. Yeah, there's another one right here that spot welds that uh, sheet metal from the other outside uh, where the inner fender well piece is. So it kind of puckers in there and then it trapped moisture over the, over the years. Uh, well, I'm already into this cab way longer than I should be. So I'm going to go ahead. We're going to do the same thing down here. This isn't structural. I'm just going to go ahead and grind these up. I got to get the little three inch. I can't get in down in here. But uh, we're going to bang these flat. And then grind them smooth and get these things filled. It's not ideal. I realize that. It's uh, really not the right way to do it. We should just, you know, cut this thing off and weld a whole new panel in here. But uh, that'd be very expensive and time consuming. And I'm already into this cab way longer than I should be. So let's... Uh, 
Let's go ahead and get these banged around a little bit and then uh, clean them up and see what we can do to make them look a little bit prettier. Okay, I wanted to bring you guys in closer so you can see what we got going on here. If you've got one of these trucks, you probably have the same issue or maybe it's hidden and you don't see it, but it, uh, it is right where the inner fender well on the outside meets and these little creases right here, there's actually little gaps outside and the wheel throws dirt and mud back inside of here. That wasn't sealed. So ideally, uh, some seam sealer out there on that where those two pieces of sheet metal meet would stop this. So what I'm gonna do, wire wheeling this paint off actually went pretty easy. So instead of me trying to DA all these runs out and everything, I think I'm just gonna take the time and just wire wheel all this off right here. It's probably gonna be faster, just get down to bare steel. This is just like, you know, cheap old rattle cam paint or whatever. So hopefully it'll go pretty quick. And once I get that stripped down, then we can go ahead and fill these. I'm really considering trying to pour some of that rust conversion down inside these holes, uh, but I, I really don't think I can get it in very far, so it'd be kind of a waste of time. So uh, I'm going to wire wheel this. I'm going to wire wheel the other one. It's just going to be dirty work. I won't bore you with it. And then uh, bring you back. We'll get these filled and uh, sand it out and hopefully make them look halfway decent, fill some of these holes here, and then uh, we can move on to the other parts inside this cab. Okay, that was fun. Not. Let's see down here. Uh, a lot of bits of paint, green paint. Some kind of a turquoise paint they had painted on there. Got that one wire wheeled pretty good. A lot of bits of wire hit me in the face. But I think it was worth it. So next step is get these things filled up. Okay, we got it... Uh, all ground and sanded. I used some sandpaper to scuff it down in there, hammered everything pretty flat. So, and I got some tape on the back side of these holes so it doesn't spooge through there and cause a problem. So we're just gonna fill these. And I've got some uh, metal reinforced body filler here. Um, I've used it on uh, other videos. So if you wanna see how to mix it and you know what it's all about, you can go back to those. We're just going to start off by filling these, and I'm just going to squish it in there really good. Just fill that hole. Now this isn't really the proper way, but you have to start making choices when you're doing your body work, how far you're going to go. You know. If you got Jay Leno time and money. You can, uh, you know, replace every little square inch on a vehicle that's got even the smallest hint of pitting from rust. But who has that kind of money to do that? So I'm squishing it in here pretty good and filling those voids down inside there. And my hope is by doing that, it'll deflect any water and keep it out. Uh, in the future so we don't have this problem again and this stuff's a little hard to work with it's not lightweight body filler by any means we've got a little uh, hole down inside that groove I need to get some just on the tip here it's pretty cold in the shop today so I got plenty of time to work this stuff get some squish down inside there and then we'll gonna trial it down inside there it's uh, 50, 49 degrees in the shop. So I'll probably have to put the heat gun on this stuff to get it to set off fast enough so I can work it still today. All right, well, it's looking pretty good. Okay, you give me more time, I'll keep playing with it and messing with it, and that's exactly what I did. So I had a stop right there. It actually started to set a little bit. We're gonna peel this tape off before it goes too far. You guys have seen me use tape before. It really keeps me in uh, from getting like inside of this groove or whatever, and then you got to try to sand that out. So, um, really recommend you guys try it. If you're not doing it already, you probably are. But it does really help out quite a bit. So we're going to let that set up. 
Hopefully we can sand it without filling any more. I see a couple low spots, but compared to what it is, and we got quite a few spot welds I'm not going to be filling. So um, we're just going to sand this till it looks smooth. It's just a little, uh, you know, kick panel. I'm not going to, I already spent way, probably way too much time than I should have already. But we've got all the holes filled. The other side had a little hole down in the groove right here. I took care of that one. So we're going to let this set up. And while we're doing that, we're going to start masking all these holes in the firewall on the firewall side, the engine side, and get ready to uh, spray the uh, rust conversion spray up underneath and get that taken care of. Okay, I got everything masked up on the inside to keep the that black from shooting through on the good parts. We're going to be spraying up underneath there. And I filled almost 30 holes in this firewall and still look at all those holes in that thing. So everything's masked off so we can go ahead and spray without worrying about that rust a converter coming through and sticking on the outside here. So let me grab the gun and start spraying. Okay, it's all blown off. I'll be using my little crappy gun here. And the reason I like it is because you can twist and angle this, uh, the cup, because it's mounted on the side so you can spray straight up and down if you want. So uh, let me crawl up in here and just start spraying. Okay, that dirty job is done. It looks pretty good up in here. These side kick panels will be painted black, gloss black, so this stuff is just the conversion, rust conversion paint. So now we can move on to stuff that's not quite so filthy. Okay, it's the next day. Um, everything looked pretty good. I had masked it at all. Uh, and so now it's time to get back to this. It's a little cool in the shop this morning, at least for around here. It's about 45 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm just going to use the little uh, Rolock and just kind of knock this flat and get me started or maybe even smooth all the way out. Now, luckily, the tape kept us out of the groove here, but in this groove, there was a little bit of a hole. So I'm going to kind of knock it flat and then make something to re-sand all that and get, we'll get that uh, smooth back, back out pretty good. And then we'll work down in this radius right here and kind of we're just kind of smoothing it out. We're not trying to get anything perfect or anything. So let's hit this real quick. All right, that's looking pretty good right there. Uh, got a little bit of hand sanding to do. This all feels pretty good. We got a little bit of um, stuff to sand out of there. A little low spot here and there. I'll probably just fill it with some body filler. And then uh, we got some areas here. I'm trying not to spend too much time on this, but I'm already into it this deep, so I'll make it look halfway decent. And uh, this down here, I don't know exactly where that rubber mat lays. So uh, I'm going to make it look good anyways, but all we have to do is just kind of smooth this out. I kind of sculpted it with the uh, little three inch roll lock here. But other than that, it all feels pretty good. Got to sand this out, so I'll figure something out for that. And we'll be about ready for primer. It's got some 36 grit here. I'm just going to kind of hand work all this. OK, 
Okay, taking a look at it, it looks, uh, looks pretty good. Um, it's got a little wave right here. Uh, this whole panel's got waves in it from these spot welds. They didn't do anything to finish those off. Uh, some stick out, some stick in. So I'm not, uh, not going to spend a tremendous amount of time on this, but this feels pretty good. A little low spot there, so I'm going to refill this. I got a little low spot there that I don't like, so I'm going to refill these. And then down here, it came out really nice, so I'm not going to mess with those at all. A little pit right there I need to fill in. Maybe a little bit sandy down in that groove. Other than that, it looks pretty good. I'm going to do the other side and see how it came out. And then uh, we'll mix up a small batch of body filler and just fill this in. All right, I got that body filler sanded out pretty smooth. We got it down to 80 grit. Um, so it's not perfect. There's waves in it, but we've got spot welds all the way through here that are, these things are puckered down. There was no finish work at, at all, zero inside these cabs. So they just stuck it together, spot welded it, and uh, painted it, and that was it. So uh, we got a little low spots here and here. I just used my hand to sand so I could smooth and feather, ed feather edge out all the edges. Um, so then we'll just throw some primer on it. That'll be next. So we've got uh, we've got some prep work to do on the dash. Get ready for primer, and then uh, then we'll get the gun out and get some primer mixed up. And get some of this stuff primed. All right, we can move on from filling those rust holes. I went ahead and used some like 120 grit or 240 grit to feather out some of these big chips and stuff on, across the dash here. Not too many. The owner already sanded this very well and feathered out most of it and did a great job. So all I'm going to do now is just go over it with a little uh, Scotch-Brite pad I've cut down and I want to go over the whole thing. And we're going to uh, just going to go ahead and prime the dash completely and, uh, and the rest of the parts that are going to get uh, black. The reason I'm doing that is to uh, use it like a sealer and uh, also help fill in some of these little uh, feather edged and stuff like that. I was considering using just a sealer, then letting it dry a few days, scuff it, and then spray the black and the clear over the top of it. But um, there's, there's enough uh, repairs that need to be done and I need to prime these kickboards and everything else. So it's just, just as easy for me to go ahead and use primer, then uh, give it a light sanding and then, uh, then we're ready to spray some black on here. So I'm just going to use a Scotch-Brite pad and just kind of go over everything just to make sure everything got a good scuffing and, uh, you know, is uh, ready to accept the primer. And then we'll mix them up and get some sprayed. I've got a lot of little pieces uh, saved up. Uh, the little vent thing here that pops up here. I've got some spot priming like on the outside of the cab to do. So what I'll try to do is get everything ready at once and save myself some labor by and time by uh, mixing up a little batch of primer and spot priming everything and then going and getting the, the uh, inside of the cab primed at the same time. Okay, the last thing we need to do before we can prime the interior is, I don't know if you guys can see down inside here, I couldn't spray that because I had all these holes uh, masked off. And this is a little bit of overkill, I realize, but uh, the owner asked me to get up underneath here, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Um, and the reason I'm doing it is because I need to get the can and brush out of the encapsulator and do down inside here. Now this is the cab corners and you can see the rust down inside there. So those, that needs to be protected. There's drains down in the bottom of these, but uh, you know, there's some rust on there and it's all been cleaned up. So it's just surface rust now. So I'll get some encapsulator on both sides. We'll paint, uh, paint in here with a brush. And then I've got a few pieces that need some uh, painting as well. So I'll just bust all that out real quick and then we'll be that much closer to getting some primer on the interior of this cab. Okay, several days later, finally ready to prime. It wasn't because I wasn't ready, it was just so cold here that uh, I was afraid to spray when it was, you know, low 40s inside the shop and that primer takes hardener and if it gets too cold it won't set up. So I got everything masked here inside the cabs ready to go and all the exterior pieces that need a little spot primer are going to get primed all i got to do is get it in the cup and start spraying
All right, I think I got it all. Just had to get a coat on it. Everything's covered. Uh, we're gonna do some uh, scuffing and light sanding inside the cab, and then we'll get the rest of this uh, sanded out, make sure it's all good, and then we can get the final prime on this thing. So let's roll it out in the sun, let it warm up a little bit. All right, glad to get that done. All right, let's take a quick look at our handiwork here. It's outside drying, curing, I hope. So we got up in there really good. And the whole, like I did, said earlier, the whole idea is just to seal this up, uh, this old paint up. I don't know if it's rattle can or original or what it is. So we just want to make sure we get it all sealed up. So when we spray something else over the top of it, it doesn't cause us problems. So. That piece is ready to go. I had looked down it. It's uh, smoothed out now. So all we have to do is block it out a little bit and uh, that whole dipped area is going to be fixed. So and all the other spots are taken care of. Really happy to have the sun out and be able to do some work. Okay, that just about wraps up this one. Uh, I want to try something different uh, with you guys. Everybody that's watching, I'm getting some comments. Everybody's working on their own projects and everything. I'd love for you to send me your project. I'd like to see, just send me a couple of pictures uh, just a little bit know what it is, what you're working on or whatever. And uh, I'll, I'll try to stick them on the end of each video so you guys can uh, kind of get your projects out there and show everybody what you got going on. I'd love to see them, really. Uh, it's really interesting to see what other people's ideas are, what they're doing, uh, instead of just me being in here by myself, working my butt off trying to get some other project done. So if you'd like to send me a picture or two, I'd love to see them. Just email me. I'll, I'll include my email down in the bottom in, in the description down here and just put project under the subject name. That way I know, uh, you know, I can distinguish it from other emails I'm getting. So I'd really love to see them. Thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And thank you so much to all my subscribers. I really love how everything's going. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.